Hello Internet, uh, I'm Kyle Pulver and this is part one of making a really simple game using Otter. So Otter is a 2D game making framework built with uh, C Sharp and SFML, uh, something I've been working on for a little while now. Uh, it's currently in beta, but it's totally usable right now to make a game. So I'm just going to show you the, the setup of getting Otter running in Visual Studio and just start building a game. So you can go to otter2d.com and bring up this page here and download the uh, latest version as a zip file. And when that's downloaded, you have something like this. So inside the zip file is the entire contents of what's on Bitbucket. And inside this otter folder is the full source and the uh, CS project file. So in this folder, I'm going to be doing all the work here. Um, I'm going to put my game here as well as Otter. So I'm going to drag Otter over here. Here we go. Um, now I'm just going to go over Visual Studio. So in Visual Studio, I'm going to do New Project, Console Application. And this is going to be like a simple Pong game. So let's see. First, I want to save this project out. So we have Otter and Otter Pong game. And then in, in the solution, I want to add an existing project. And that project's going to be Otter. And it's going to warn me that this is from the internet, but that's okay. Okay, so in our solution we have Otter and then our game, uh, but the game won't know about Otter until we add it as a reference. So we're going to add reference, projects, Otter, okay. So now our game should know about Otter, and we can test this by typing using Otter, and it auto-completes Otter, which means it's totally working. So cool, we have a game, and it knows about Otter, so we're just going to start using it. So the first step is to actually like create a game. So that's like uh, the game class in Otter. Just a new game. This is gonna be the title of our window, then the width of the window, the height of the window, and then some more stuff that we don't need to specify. The defaults are fine. So we have our game defined, and now we just need to do game dot start. Let's give this a quick test. And there you go, we have a window that's, let's see, 1000 by 750. The title is Otter Pong. Let's see, so to explain Otter, it's basically uh, a game will run a scene and then the scene has entities in it. Uh, and then the scene will update the entities and render them, all that kind of stuff. So basically you're building a game out of entities that are inside scenes and you're running one scene at a time. So to get started with Pong, we're going to need a couple of things. First, we're going to need to make a, a scene to use. So we'll just make a new class. It's called Pong Scene. It's going to extend scene from Otter. We'll just do a basic constructor here for it. And for the game to know about this scene, before it starts, we need to say game.firstScene equals new pong scene. And just as a quick test, I'm going to say override the begin function of this, of this scene, do console right line So uh, in theory, this should launch and then write that line of the console. Okay, so next we want to add some of the basic things we're going to need for Pong. Uh, we're going to need a paddle, which will be an entity. And then ball, that'll be an entity. And by the way, my recording software like freaks out my mouse, so sometimes like my mouse just disappears, I have to find it again. Um, 
Okay, cool. So let's see. Let's let's uh hmm, what do we want to do first? Okay, so we have paddle, let's do the paddle first. So public paddle. Okay, so in order to even see the paddle, it's gonna need a graphic, so it's probably gonna be like a rectangle. So we could do an image, which is a graphic type. We do this little handy dandy create rectangle function. We'll say it's going to be 10 by 100. And then we'll say here, I'm going to add new paddle. So we're adding this entity to this scene. And if we push F5 right now, we still get nothing. And that's because the graphic that we made is not yet assigned to be the graphic of the paddle. So what we need to do is just say set graphic image paddle. There we go, we have one paddle already up and running. And let's see. What do we want to do now? We can do the same thing for the ball. So we'll just set up a quick constructor here. And for this image, we're going to do image create circle. And I'm just going to say it's the radius is 7. It sounds like a good number. And we'll do set graphic image ball. And then here we'll say add new ball. Okay, so you can almost make that out. The ball and the paddle are just sitting at uh, zero, 0, in the scene. So we have some basic entities added. So the next thing we want to do is start to set up the actual game. So uh, the first thing I want to do is actually set up some stuff for the players. So I'm going to make a new class that's just going to be global. And I'll just dump some global stuff here. So for the players, I want to actually use this class from Otter called a session. And I can make one for player one and player two. A session basically represents the, like, a player that is playing your game, like sitting in front of the keyboard or controller or whatever. Um, so after I've created my game, I can say uh, global player one equals game add session. And I'll just name this P1 and then player two we'll get P2. So when you make a session like this, the game adds the session to itself and then automatically um, assigns the ID of the session. So um, you want to do game.addSession instead of, like you don't want to do new session because that won't uh, configure stuff correctly. Um, okay, so I think what I want to do right now is position the paddle in the right spot. I don't want it to be up against the wall I want it to be like kind of out from the sides here. Um, and actually, we're actually going to need two. One for player one and one for player two. But they're both going to be in the same position right now. Um, so basically, what I want to do right now is change this constructor to take a session. And I also want to keep track of what session that is. So say this player equals player. And I want to position the paddle based on what player is actually controlling it. So I can say if player ID equals 0, then X should equal 50. And if not, then it should be the current game instance, it's width minus 50. So player 1 will be 50 from the left, and player 2 will be 50 from the right. So let's make a quick comment. This is player 1. Player two. So the, the the base session ID is going to be zero. So zero will be player one, or one will be player two, um, and so on. Uh, and let's just see what we have to do now. Okay, we have to do this. We have to actually use that constructor correctly now. There we go. We have two paddles. One on the left. One on the right. The ball is still. Not in the right spot, so I'm going to fix that. I want the ball to be in the center when it starts. So, 
when it's when it's created, I'm gonna say it should be half width on the x, half height on the y. Okay, so we have the ball centered there. We need the paddles to be centered here. So we'll say half height. Oh, but the paddles are actually being drawn from 0, 0 of their coordinates. So even though I'm saying to be in the middle, they actually look like they're all the way down here. So to fix that, I can just take the image and center its origin. And that makes sure it's nice and centered there. Do the same thing with the ball. Just make sure the ball looks like it's totally centered. Cool, so that's like the basic setup. And the next thing we want to do is we want to make the paddles move in response to the player's input. So the first thing I want to do is set up some input stuff. So I can take the session I created, and the session has this controller, which is a set of uh, buttons and axes that you can use. Uh, you can assign keys to them, or mouse clicks, uh, joystick input, all that kind of stuff. So for Pong, I only really care about up and down. So I can say up, add key. Player 1's going to be on the left, so I'll say up is W. And then for down, I'll say that S is down. Then for player 2, I'll do the same thing. Except player 2 is going to be on the right, so player 2 will use the arrow keys. Okay, so that's like setting up the input. So now I need to be able to uh, take that input and read it and then respond to it. So basically I'm going to say... I wonder how many times I'm actually going to say basically during this video. Um, I'm going to say if the player that's controlling this paddle, check their controller. If their if their up button on the controller is being pushed down, then I want to move up. And I move up just by saying my y position minus equals five. And I'll do the same thing for down, except down is plus equals five. Well, let's test it. Okay, I'm pushing W, S, up, and down. Cool. So we have this. Nice base setup now. We have input working for uh, for our paddles. Uh, I think the next step we want to do is actually just get the ball to move. So I'll give it a speed. And the speed is kind of just like a vector tube but with like a clamp built into it. So I can define like the maximum speeds. So if I say 10, 10, that means the ball will never move faster than uh, negative 10 and 10 on the x and negative 10 and 10 on the y. So let's see, to start things off, I'll say just launch the ball to the right. That's pretty easy to do right now. And to make the speed actually work, I need to make sure that the x and y are being affected by those by that speed. There we go, the ball launches. Oh, but it flies away. Okay. And actually that reminds me, I can just I can get rid of this. I think I know that the scene is actually working. Okay, so um, collision. Let's do collision. Uh, okay, there's a long way to do this and a short way to do it, depending on what your needs are. So I'll do the long way first. So uh, first, we'll set up some tags. So we'll say public union tags, and I care about the paddle and the ball. So I'll set up, I'll set up the collider on the paddle first. So Let's see, I want to do box collider, hit box equals new box collider. And I'm going to match the um, dimensions of the rectangle. And then for tags, it takes actually ints, so I'm going to cast my enum to an int. And then, much like the graphic, that actually doesn't do anything until I say set collider to the hitbox. Okay. And just to make sure that it actually works, I'll say hitbox.render 
down here. Okay, so the hitbox is here. So that's a small issue, right? Because we centered the origin of our image, but we're not centering the origin of our collider, so they're not going to line up. So we can fix that really quick just by saying center origin. And now we have a nice collider that lines up with our graphic. Okay, so that's a long way to do it. If you're in a situation where you just need a simple hitbox uh, and only one collider for the entity, uh, you can do something like this. So I'll just kill all this for now. So you can just say set hitbox 10 100 and then cast that paddle to an int. Uh, and then to reference that hitbox, you can use collider dot. And then collider is basically a reference to the first available collider of the entity. And set hitbox, what that does is it's just a shortcut to add a box collider to the entity. So collider dot will reference that hitbox that we just made. Um, so we'll just do center origin here. And then down here we will do collider dot render. And there we go, the same exact thing, just with a little bit simpler, a little bit quicker, more game jammy uh, syntax. So real quick, I'll just add some collision to the ball. Um, I'm just going to use a hitbox again because it's fast. Um, there is a uh, there is a circle collider available, but uh, I just want to use hitboxes for the for the. Uh, purpose of this video. Man, words. Um, okay, so I'm going to do uh, collider. Nope, not that. Collider at center origin. And okay, so I assume it's working, but we can check by overriding render here. Collider dot render. We'll get a white and red rectangle. You can kind of see it right there as before the ball flies away. Um, don't really need to see that anymore. Don't need to see this guy anymore. Okay, so now the ball just needs to collide with a paddle and then respond. So we can say collider collide. And we want to check at the ball's current x and current y. And we're checking against paddle. So anything that's been tagged with paddle, we will collide with. Um, and this function will return the first collider that um, collides. So it's returning a collider. So we need to store that in a variable. And basically how you check for collision right now is you say um, if this collider that we're trying to assign to from this function, if that is not null, then that means we've collided with something. And uh, I'm guessing like the simplest way to do this is to respond to this is just to say speed.x times equals negative one. So we'll just Reverse the speed and the ball will bounce. Uh, it will it'll appear like it's bouncing. This goes back and forth. There we go. We can move the paddles. Um, and uh, I'm actually going to stop right here for this for this part one. Uh, and then in the next video, I'll I'll keep going and keep adding some more stuff to this. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching and stay tuned for part two.